Sister Nikki, you are welcome. Sister Rosemary, you are welcome. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus. You are all blessed. You are welcome tonight on this broadcast. May the Lord bless you for joining tonight. Please, as you are joining, invite your friends. Share the video and let other people be a part of this ministration tonight. God bless you all for joining tonight. Thank you for turning in. May the peace of the Lord that passes every understanding be upon your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Happy weekend once again. We bless the name of God for the privilege he has given unto us. We thank the Lord for the life he has given unto us. May the name of God alone be glorified tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Please share the videos and share in the groups where you are. Unfortunately, they blocked me, so I cannot share in even our groups. Yeah, but the Lord is God. The ministry of God will surely go on by the grace of Almighty God. You are all welcome in the, in the name of Jesus. Please invite your friends. Also, let those in the group, also in the ministry, let them know that I am already on life for them to be a blessing as well and also to other people as they are going to share this ministration. I want to pray, share a word of prayer tonight. Father Lord, I thank you tonight. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. Adoration and praise be a stripe most high unto you. O Lord, be thou exalted, O God, for all that you have done for us, O God, today. For giving us the privilege, O God, to be alive today, O God. We reference you, Lord. We are not taking it for granted. I've come to say thank you once again. Oh Lord, I thank you for each and every one here tonight, even those that are not here and those that will watch this broadcast later. I bless your name for their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our family, friends, and loved ones. We thank you for the saints all over the world. We thank you for the less privileged. We thank you for the homeless. We thank you for the widows, oh God. Oh Lord, we thank you, oh God, because you are the husband to the widows. Oh, we thank you, oh God, for providing shelter for those who don't have places to stay, O oh God. We thank you for the less privilege, O oh Lord, for always making a way for them, O oh God. Being a father to the fatherless, Lord, we bless you because you are everywhere. O oh Lord, we thank you for who you are. Tonight, O oh God, I humble myself before you. Anything that will make this broadcast, O oh God, to be of no avail, O oh God, I ask for your mercy tonight. Every area I have held against you, O oh God. I pray for your mercy in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let your will alone be done in this broadcast. Holy Spirit, I humble myself before you. Take in charge over my heart, over my thoughts, over everything tonight. I hand over to you. I subdue myself under your authority, Holy Spirit of the living God. Let it be none of me, but all of you tonight. Let your word that goes forth today, O Lord, let it be yours and nothing about me, but all about you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, my director, my best friend, I'm not ready, but you are always ready. Let every word that comes from tonight, let it be the word that will edify souls and spirit, that will bring, O God, my Father, reviver unto the lives of your children, and we bring also preparation unto their lives tonight. Oh Lord, we bless your name for all you'll be doing, oh God. Even in as much that a lot of people pass away in 2019. 2020, a lot has also died, but we are alive. Not because we are righteous or better than them, but because of your love and your tender mercy. Because it pleases you, oh God, for us to be alive. So Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege you have given today. I soak each and every one, oh God, tonight on this broadcast in the blood of Jesus. I soak our families in the blood of Jesus. I soak our children in the blood of Jesus. I soak our friends and loved ones in the blood of Jesus. Saints all over the world, oh God, we soak them in the blood of Jesus. In as much the time is drawing near every day when we don't know, oh God. Lord, we pray for the ability to stand still, oh God. Lord, we need more abundant grace in these last days, oh God. Oh Lord, give us the grace to stand still to the end, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Anything that is still not right in us, oh God, Please, Father, reveal it unto us that we, we will stand blameless and spotless. That the day you are coming by death or by living, O God, that we shall see you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord, have your way. I soak this platform in the blood of Jesus. I soak the network in the blood of Jesus. O Lord, have your way tonight. And let all the glory return to you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. You are all welcome once again. Thank you for tuning in. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to see each and every one of you. May the Lord bless you all for joining tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. 
We bless the name of God tonight for all he has done for us. In as much, I'm not going to say any topic. I just ask the Holy Spirit to lead through because there's a lot of points I'm going to touch tonight. So I don't want to just say a topic that I'm going to stand on one area. And in as much as we are all waiting and waiting and waiting, we know that the Lord Almighty is at hand. As we can see the signs everywhere, children are waking up, announcing that they saw Jesus is coming. A lot of prophecies, dreams, and revelations here yeah, is coming forth. Please, my dear brothers and sisters, this is not a joking matter. The Lord really is coming. And I want to pray for each and every one here tonight, please. If there is anything that will make us to miss the rapture, either by death or by living, because we have no life of our own, Christ is coming back again. Many people are not taking it so serious. Many people are taking it as a joke. It's not a joke, my dear sisters and brother. One day, it's just going to be the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. Also, they were warned, yeah, but they didn't hear. It's going to be the time of Noah. They were warned, but they did not hear. Even when the Israelites were also in the wilderness for 40 days, they were warned. They saw the wrath of God even in Egypt, but there was a time they become rebellious. God told Moses to warn them, but most of them were rebellious, and God destroyed them. But this time, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has come to die for me and you, who have shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. He has given us the grace. Jesus Christ, Moses was given the law. Why Jesus Christ came with grace? Because of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have to take it for granted because it's the grace that is keeping me and you today. It's the grace of the Lord that is making when God look at the suffering that Jesus Christ went out for us, I believe that is the reason why this world have still not ended today. It's just that grace that is keeping us. That is why Apostle Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 6, he said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abide? He said, God forbid, we cannot continue. We have grace. Before there was no grace. Before the Lord just give his word and a warning. And when they don't respect that warning, it comes to destroy whatever he wants to destroy. He's the owner of the world. He's is the owner of our soul, is the owner of our living, is the existence of our bread without the Lord in us. So when we are rebellious against him and we refuse to hear, look at what is going on in the world, the Lord gets angry. The Lord is very wrought about this earth now. Let us look at the word of God in the book of Philippians. I'm not going to quote so much scriptures. I'm just going to say a little bit word today and touch some few points for a lot of things is going on. Please prepare your own, prepare your heart, prepare your life in as much that I am talking. By the special grace of God, I'm not the one speaking. The word is also coming back to me. As I'm speaking to you, it's coming back to me. It's not all about we dressing at, uh, uh, in holiness and our inward is still living at the world. Our in what is still if God opens the heart of some of us you will be surprised and marvel that these are people who are even practicing holiness for years this is not the time to keep things my sisters and brothers the word of God says in the book of Philippians I'm going to read the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 it says finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report he said if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on these things these are the only things says meditate on it whatsoever truth live a life of truth yeah, before, because we want to overshadow or maybe we want to make money in any means. Yeah, we lie about things. Sometimes we buy something for 5 euro and we tell people, oh, we bought it for 20 euro. That's why we are selling it for 25 euro. Please, don't, we, now is the time that even if you buy it for 5 euro, somebody is asking, but it's not expensive. If you know you want to make it as a business, put your own game, but don't open your mouth to tell somebody, this is amount I bought it. Like what I mean is that you can buy something for 5 euro. Somebody wants to know it's better of you to lie about it just talk about the price and the profit you want to put don't tell anybody that oh i bought it for 15 euro when you know you buy you have already lied a small lie there is nothing like a small lie we have to live a life of truth today that is why the lord jesus christ he says there is no liar no liar that is going to enter heaven to them the world is full of lies and the philippian is telling us he said whatsoever truth he said we should live a life of truth.
truthfulness in these last days is very important. He said, whatever things are noble and things that are just, living a just life, a life that somebody will recognize you just for one character and say, this person, this is the person. Oh, this person, this is how this person is. It is very important that our lifestyles represent Christ because Jesus, the word of God says, God is a justice God. He's a God of just. He's just in righteousness. He's just in holiness. What God requires from me and you is to live a life of truthfulness, a life of noble, a life of pure purity, a life of just and lovely. We should love our neighbor as ourselves. What we don't want anyone to do to us. It is very, very awful that maybe I don't want to be uh, insult and uh, somebody to insult me. I start insulting somebody else. I don't want somebody to treat me bad, but I am treating this person bad. When I don't get treated bad, uh, when I get treated bad, I get angry whatsoever is noble whatsoever is truth this is the time for us to put on the armor of god in all way we can do it no matter how hard it is to live a life of just and a life of truth jesus is coming back again it is everywhere it is over the news it is over youtube is in internet it's so painful that a lot of christians today they are not even preparing their pastors are not preparing them for this wonderful day that is coming if you go to churches today you'll be surprised what they are preaching they are not preparing anyone for the coming of our lord jesus dear brethren whatsoever is truth build yourself to all truth you might be a liar before, but because you want to make heaven, the only escape we have is for us to be raptured or when we die to see the face of God. Hellfire is never a place for anyone to go. Tonight, I am just here to encourage because a lot of things are going on in the world that sometimes when you see the news, you will be marvel what is going on. But as a child of God, Jesus already foretold us. He already warned us, his children. He said, if we see these things happening, kingdom against kingdom, nation against kingdom, uh, against nation, people betray, betraying one another, fight, miles, gossiping, a lot of things are happening today prosperity preachers miracle false prophets everywhere he said we should know that the time is near as the tree is getting dry that means the son of man will soon appear lord jesus is coming to take his bride are you living a life of truthfulness what kind of life do you have are you living in your private life I might preach here and I might, I might be living different life. The word of God says in the book of Luke chapter 12, he says everything that is done in the secret, he says it will be revealed in light. No matter how you paint it, no matter how you pretend, no matter how you keep it, dear sisters and brothers, for you to read the word of God, to edify yourself is the last thing you can do now. Don't wait for anybody to come and open scriptures for you and twist it how they want it and to suit their sinful heart, to suit their, their, the kind of life they want to live. Don't allow anybody to open your Bible for you. When you are giving the word of God in your hand, you get to the word when Jesus Christ is there. When you stand before him, you are going to stand and say, yes, I read it. And the Bible is going to be used to judge us because it's the word. The word of God says in the book of John chapter 1, he says the beginning was the word. What is the word? The spoken word. This is the word that we are having today. Many of the servants of God had the word and they wrote it down because the Holy Spirit told them to write it. And that is today. We are speaking through the word of God. We are seeing what the Lord has instructed us. Many of us are still not broken why because we are not reading the word of god we are not allowing the holy spirit to come into our heart and give us more brokenness now is not the time is the time for us to pray is the time for us to stand according to the word of god let our prayer this time be more effective than what it was before last night 2019 let's study the word of god be more effective in our life than how we studied 2019 let our consistency in the things of god be more than how we did 2019 now is the time to populate heaven if you know how to evangelize now is the time for you to come out to evangelize if you know how to, to, to convince now is the time for you to preach Christ and to convince people let them know about what is coming up it's going to be like the day of Noah that nobody nobody if you don't go anybody that is not rapture is going to regret what have I been doing what happened to me? 
I have been praying. I have been joining holiness group. I have been listening to the word of God. I have been praying. What is going on? This is the time for examination. Self-examination. Examining yourself. Sometimes when I pray, I say, Lord, have mercy upon my foolishness. Anything that I have done that I don't know is a sin, I'm still living. Lord, reveal it to me. Because it's going to be awful that day. That every new news you'll be hearing. Children are gone. Your friends are gone. People are gone. you start hearing. Yeah, people just vanish from the earth. And you are still remaining. It's not our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, now is the time for salvation. As the salvation draw near daily, as we see all the coming of our Lord, now the one word order is just very ripe to be on the on on, on, on to be involving. We are already in it. This generation we are now are the one that we in, that we the, uh, that we experience. Excuse me. This generation is the one either that we experience the rapture or that we experience the tribulation. It's very in our face. There is no way we can change it. There is no way we can hide it. What shall it profit a man to build all the houses, to gain all the fame, to build all the, to drive all the cars, to, to, for people to know you in worldliness, like the footballers. Everybody know that they are stars, but are they stars of heaven? Many churches today does not preach this salvation. They are still adamant about telling people about the preparation. Of the Lord Jesus coming. It's so awful that a lot of troops are trooping into the wide broad way. Yeah, it's going to lead to destruction. Many sisters are opening their eyes. Even children of three years old, they are saying that they are speaking. Oh, mommy, Jesus is coming. It's a sound warning to all of us. No matter the kind of life that we live, no matter how we pretend, that very day is going to show. Except maybe somebody is dead out already. That is when we don't know. But if anybody is that very day, you are not rapture, even your pastors, let me tell you, you cannot find them because they will be running for their hideout. He said, whoever is just should live justly. Whoever is truth should continue in your truthfulness. Anyone that is humble, noble, humbleness, continue to be humble because of your crown. Anyone that is lovely, continue to show love. Let me tell you about the love we preach. A love is a commandment from God. It is a must to love. But I want to tell you one thing that many people don't like to hear the truth. Friendship is a choice. Because there are a lot of friendship that will pull you to hell. And such friendship, you have to back out of such friendship. Do not be deceived. You Love is a must. Love everybody, but the people you associate with is a choice. People who does not edify your spirit, who come every time with gossip, who come every time with parties, who come every time with maybe separation, causing havoc in phone, telling you things, you have to separate from them. Friendship is a choice. That doesn't mean if they call you, you don't have to speak. Pick your phone, but let your conversation be short. Let them know that Christ is coming. You are not involving in this thing. Love is a must. But friendship is a choice. What kind of friends do you keep? Many of us still keep friends that pull us back to the world. Many of friends still keep us, put, still keep friends that make the word of God not to make an impact in our life. Many of us still keep people around us that make our prayer lives to be down. Many of us still keep friends that after you have heard about the holiness word, you go and they will pollute the word in your mind. They will pollute the word. They will change the word because why? You don't have the knowledge of the Holy Spirit who is going to teach you all truth. You have not acquired it in your life. And you don't want to have the Holy Spirit yourself. You don't want to come upon the Holy Spirit. When you pray, you are so adamant. There are people today you keep in your life. A lo love is a must, is a commandment from God. It doesn't mean you are not speaking to somebody. Me, you hate that person. But you have to make your spirit to be right. Anything that will make your spirit to have double mind, that will make your spirit to be troubled, please stay away from it. Stay away from it. 
Don't let people say, love, love. You, your enemy is there who is pulling you. After you have already been of light, then you say, oh, because God said we should love, oh, your enemy will come. He will bring gossip. You give ear because I love. Let me give ear to gossip. Before you know, you are already commenting on that gossip. Before you know, you are already, you are already falling back to what they are doing. A lot of Christians who entered holiness today, a lot of brothers and sisters who started with holiness, now they are going back. Why the Muslim, the Buddhist, the Hare Krishna, they are giving their life genuinely to God. We that know Christ who have been following Christ from the beginning. What is happening? Look at many Christians are going back. Many of them have turned back to the world. Some of them I see before. They run away from holiness. But the day you run into their pictures, you'll be surprised that they are back to where they, they came from. They started going back to their vomit again. That is why you have to be careful. What company do you keep? What associates that is surrounding you? The only associate you have to surround yourself with is those that edify you every day. What comes out because of your gathering is about the rapture. Is about Jesus. Is about finding Christ more and more. Is about inviting Christ into our life more and more. This is the gathering of these last days that you are supposed to find. Any church that you are going. That does not tell you about the coming of our Lord. For you to prepare yourself is a place you have to turn your back quickly and run away. Any place you are worshipping that does not edify you that you leave the church every time with anger. Please, you have to walk away from that church. Any church that does not make you to have peace, you have to run away from such church. What am I trying to say? Today... I've heard a lot of people. I went to church. The way the pastor preached. Yeah, the pastor was just talking about money, money, money. The pastor was just talking about this, this, this. A lot of marriages are broken today because of a particular church that they believe their pastors more than God. They believe their pastors more than Jesus Christ. I was talking to a woman who left her husband and gets married again. I told her, I said, please don't be offended, man. This woman that you are with now, or the man you have family with this man, this is not your husband. Your first husband, as far that man is alive, that you got children with this man, your holiness you are practicing is a fake if you don't discharge this new marriage. The woman said that a high pastor, there is a big pastor that told her that at Everything, once she confessed her sin, she has already forgiven. Why Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 19, when the Pharisees came, Jesus Christ told them, he said, before it was not like so. Why Moses gave a letter of divorce? It's because of the hardening of the heart. He said, before God created a man and female. And he says later in that book of Matthew 19, go and read it. He said, whatsoever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. The world is full of lies to suit how they want to live. But the word of God says, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness with truthfulness. He said, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comment unto the Father except through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no way that Hare Krishna or all these, all these other gods they are serving, calling themselves, buying down to statues, buying down to all these things that does not glorify God, that we are serving one God. There is no way, only through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now is the time for you to check yourself, my dear brothers and sisters. What kind of company do I keep? What kind of church do I go to? Does it glorify God? Some people go to church, they are angry at why they say because of the way people dress in the church. But when you ask them, what are you still doing in that church? He said, God will use me to change the church. Yeah, God will use you to change the church. And you are coming back with anger. What about if the trumpet sound? You are coming out because you are not able to correct. You are, they are coming out because with anger, because you cannot speak to that pastor. Because when you want to speak to them, they are very proud. They say you are not called. Why should you say things like that? Jesus Christ has died. And now you yourself, you are putting your soul in danger. Because the Bible says we should be angry, but we should not sin. If you know you cannot correct or change people or oppose when the pastor is preaching lies on the pulpit, what are you still doing there? You think because of your dressing the people will change? No, they cannot change. Only what you have to do for your soul to be saved. You have to run for your life because the Bible told us, it says salvation is a personal thing. You are not selfish about protecting your own salvation. 
You are not selfish about when you don't want your spirit to be, uh, to be destroyed. You are not selfish about when you separate yourself from the world. You are not selfish about, don't let people let you understand that, yes, that you are guilty of something the Holy Spirit is telling you, that no, you are on the right channel. Listen to your heart and the spirit of God in you. Does it judge you that because you don't go to that worldly church, or is it telling you to separate yourself from the world? The word of God told us that we should not be equally yoked with an unbeliever. There is no way light and darkness pass because you can hear the undiluted word of God. And tomorrow you go somewhere to a church where you are invited. The atmosphere around that church, that once it comes to you, you understand that atmosphere is not pure. The word of God says in the book of Luke chapter 12, he said, in the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, first of all, he said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. What is going on in the world? And in verse 2, he said, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. What is going on today in this world? I feel bitter when I hear that many people, the, 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 the British people, they go to Africa, somewhere in Africa, they sell, the black people have to sell their children, they say they want to take care of their children, they pay money for these men, old men, they start taking these children and defiling small, small children, children of six, both boys, both girls, the world is getting corrupt, many children are being raped today, the world is poor, it's dirty, there's no way, anybody that is thinking, Nigeria is going to come back to reality i'm sorry for you which means you are not having the hope of the coming of our lord jesus christ if the lord jesus christ which have told us that we should be aware of this last day that we should know when the time comes when we see all these things stop we ourselves to be ready and you are still saying and eh, let those old governments go out any new one will come it will come and make the country to be nice again this is what the lord jesus said when we see these things those governments are corrupt that is why even trump we have to be praying for him because God has put that man. It is God that selects Trump. Because they say he used the, all the foolish things of this world to exhort himself. Many people look at Trump like he's foolish. But God is walking through him, making Christianity today to stand. If that man, Trump, leave that throne, that place of presidential seat, a lot of Christians will understand now that, yes, what we are talking about, about the tribulation, about the, the ushering of Antichrist is already there. The ushering in of the Antichrist is already there. What kind of life are you living? You are very important, my dear sisters. You are very important, my dear brothers. Anything outside your soul this hour, please don't allow anything to stain it. Anything that will make your soul this hour, to have double-minded, please carry your Bible and pray and read your Bible. This is not the time for you to trade your soul for no reason. This is not the time for you to please men rather than to please God. I choose my 2020 wisely. I say, Lord, it's all about you. I don't care what comes across my way. Let me tell you, Christians, my sisters and brothers, the more you travel in righteousness, more distractions are coming your way. Please beware of it. This 2020 is going to be more, double times than 2019. We just started the year, but what is coming in front? Only those that pray hard. Only those. Jesus wants us to pray. He said we should pray so that we will not fall into temptation. Prayer is what? Your prayer has to be on fire because the devil does not come. It's his time. It's the ghost of this earth. The devil is ruling this earth. Go to the shop today. You can never see any responsible dress for a woman. Go to shopping today. You can never see any responsible dress for a woman. Either it's open back or it's open chest. Or even if the dress is even long, they will still tear it. They, they will see all your laps. There is no responsible dress. Look at the kind of trousers. Trouser is a sin, but people are still complaining about that. What is so wrong for you to wear a appropriate dress? What is so wrong? What is so hard for you to dress like a female? To dress in holiness or modesty? No, because the gods of this earth 
which is Satan itself, has polluted the heart of many. Many people are blindfolded. I'm wondering, in the church, the pastors which are preaching, don't, don't, they, don't, don't, don't they see what is going on in the news? Don't they see what is going on on Twitter? Don't they see what is going on on YouTube? Or they just close their eyes that they cannot see Facebook, they cannot see Twitter, or they don't hear news. I am still wondering, why have they decided to sow their soul? Look at how females are living today. Many divorce everywhere. Many parties everywhere. Women are now leaving their husband in the house. Leaving children for their husband. They are now going to parties. Every Mondays to Fridays to Sundays is only parties. You must see one party from Monday to Sunday. When you see all these women and men, you wonder, are they not afraid? Why? Because the shepherds in the pulpit have told them that the grace of God has covered them. Why? They have lied. The reason why they are already following that way because the word of God is no more effective in their life because they never open it anymore. Do you know when you start opening the word of God, the Bible, and you start sleeping, you have to pray for deliverance. That is what is happening to those people because Satan, first of all, is still their prayer from there. The first thing that Satan kills in a, a, a life of a believer is your prayer life when your prayer is dead then the next thing is for you to for satan to take out your the word of god from your life the word of god will no more you know when you start singing you remember what jesus did for you before now when you will start singing you don't even feel what jesus did for you anymore the first thing he kills after your prayer is gone it takes the word of god from you you will not have appetite to open your bible anymore only what you do is that maybe carry your phone around. And one thing I have noticed with telephone, you can be really addicted to read. It's like a drugs. If you might think it's a joke, many of us who are watching me, you know what I'm talking about. This telephone is like a drugs. There are times I pick up my phone. Before I get myself, I know that two, three hours is gone. What am I doing with the phone? If I open my Bible, two, three hours is enough for me to get something. Even if I don't understand all, definitely I will pick up something for that three hours. But many Christians today, they cannot even open their Bible for just one hour anymore. When prayer is coming, to pray for one hour, Christians are already saying, ah, the prayer is too long. Oh, why are we praying too long like this now? Let us do and close. Is the tragedy of Satan to pull us. Every good thing God has created, Satan has come to spoil it because he has been a father of a lie. Every good thing God has made, Satan has come to steal it and turn it upside down. God, Jesus said we should pray without ceasing. He said we should pray so that we don't fall into temptation. He said that his house is not called a house of thief. It should be called a house of prayer. Satan said, okay, a house of prayer. I will kill the prayer in all your children's life. All the saints, I will first of all fight against their prayer life. Because that is what Jesus said. He said my temple should be called the temple of prayer. A house of prayer. The first thing that Satan comes in between the children of God is the prayer life. He comes to devour that place. And when your prayer life is quenched, let me tell you, every other thing in your life, prayer is the light that you have. Your prayer life is what that keeps you going. Your prayer life is what that connects you. Many Christians cannot pray and fast anymore. When it comes to maybe eating, you are not fasting. You see some people cannot eat even 2 o'clock. When you ask them, you say, I never even eat money food though. Around 3 o'clock, they've not eat. But called for fasting and prayer. 8 o'clock in the morning, that person is already getting hungry. That person is already getting thirsty. Satan, anything that will make us to be connected with God, Satan comes to disconnect it. And you have to be watchful. The Bible says, who is just be judged. If you know, you shake your life that your prayer is no more. Ah, you are getting angry when time of prayer is. Oh, please, you have to shake yourself. Satan is trying to do something. He is, the, he is an enemy to all the creation God has ever created. He steal your prayer life. He steal the word of God. And as he's killing your prayer life, he's putting another thing to replace it from you, for you. As he's killing the word of God, he will say, okay, 
you start putting prayers in your phone every day you don't want to pray yourself you are listening to people praying in your ears on your phone and you'll be saying amen 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 yeah from there your prayer your own prayer life is dying because you yourself you are not opening your mouth to pray when satan take your own mouth out of prayer he lied to you and don't worry it's the same thing people are praying just be saying amen in the morning you are going out you say after all i'm just still also i mean I'm, I'm still with god people are praying you just be saying yeah, amen no amen no you yourself your prayer is already dying you cannot pray for yourself anymore that is when you see that when they say pray you are weak either you need that you put your head or you use your you your prayer life first of all is what satan comes for and after that it comes to the word of god when you open the bible the next thing it comes to you is sleeping you are surprised that all the time when you are talking with your friend you are uh, doing any other thing there is no problem immediately you sit down to study the word of god the next thing before you read the page you start dozing you say ah and when you open your eyes you forgot it. it happens to me it's an experience that is why i'm also telling you and i fought with it i said no satan with me with the apostle paul says he said i discipline myself when you know such things is happening to you, go to your knee in fasting. God, anything that wants to quench my prayer life, anything that wants to make your word to be of no effect, that I cannot read your word anymore. Oh God, remove that, pow that power, any power that has entered me. Projection. Oh God, be let it be uprooted. It's a projection. You cannot read your word of God anymore. Prayer life is gone. You other, other year people praying for you. And when you read your Bible, you are sleeping. Now you don't have any chance. You don't want to open the Bible anymore. Please, it's the last day. It's getting tough. It will, the Bible says, even the very elect will be deceived. Many people today, if you look at them, no matter they come out and say, I'm a Christian. Ask them when it comes to prayer. Before you, they, you know, their heart is already beating. They are angry because the prayer is getting long. Only 30 minutes prayer. Somebody is already offended. Why is it too long? Jesus told his disciples. When he took them to the garden of Genimazam, he said, why can't you pray with me for one hour? Just one hour. Let us look at it so that before I make a mistake, let me not say something. Matthew 21. Praise the Lord. Matthew 21, in the verse 13. Jesus said a word. And this word is something I hold cl close. And I see that it's happening. Even in the churches today, you see that pastors don't pray anymore. Pastors can preach and preach and preach. When it comes to prayer, they just declare a word on you. And they say, go, it shall be well. But they will not even want you to pray. When they say, like one hour prayer, people praying in the church, is very hard these days. Jesus said, in the book of Matthew 21, in the verse 13, let me just take only what I want there. He said, and Jesus said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. You understand? He didn't use another word there. My house, another translation, we say my temple should be called a temple of prayer. Our body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, shall be filled with prayer. He says, but you have made it a den of thieves. Why is there no prayer? That is the first thing Satan come to kill. And let us see also in the book of the same Matthew 26. In the 26 verse 41. Let me read 40. He said, Jesus Christ. Let me read 39. He said, he went a little further and fell on his face. Jesus Christ himself went a little further. He fell on his face in the, in, in the garden in Gethsemane, Gethsemane. And then he fell on his face. I'm reading 39. Saying, oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Nevertheless, not I will, but let your will, let the will of God be done. 40. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And said to Peter, What? Could you not wash with me one hour? Jesus Christ was even saying, Could you? He said, What? So even one hour, you cannot even wash with me. And he says, Wash and pray, 41. Wash and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is always willing to do that. He said, But the flesh is weak. So how do you deal with your flesh? Satan comes to kill our prayer life. 
He does not come to when he do anything. His own is first to come to do that thing that it pro, that glorify us in God, that, that make us to be connected with God. Satan comes to destroy it. Satan has no purpose in our life. It's because he's angry that the heaven we are planning to go. He says we cannot go there because it is not there. And when you are not sensitive, both physical and spiritual, you will say it's a normal thing. And uh, let me just share the Lord's prayer. Let me just share the grace. All of them is prayer. Jesus said, could you not wash with me for one hour? Some people cannot pray 20 minutes. They are tired. Check yourself. You have to run for your life. Because this is the only way we can be raptured. That is the only way we can be broken. That is the only way that anything that is not planted by the Lord in our life can be uprooted. It can be heart, heart of stone. It can be hardiness of heart. It can be jealousy. It can be envy. It can be unfruitfulness of unrighte unrighteousness living in you. But the only way you can get rid of it is for you, for you to pray. You cannot just sit down. You will start praying and they come to give you food in dream. And you wake up, you do not remember your dream. And you are just there. Lord, I thank you. And hey, I don't they rush, they go work. But Lord, I know say my, your grace cover me. You have to pray. I say, Lord, anything I have ate, ate or anything that happened to me that will defy my that have defied my body unknowingly when I don't see my dream. Oh God, my father, because your word says, Whatsoever you have not planted shall be uprooted. Oh God, let it be uprooted. You will see that that thing that has happened in the night, because we live a life, a spiritual life, without you connected in the spirit. My dear sister, one day you will just go from up, boom, you are gone. You will just be talking on yourself. The Holy Spirit is no more there. When there is no power of prayer, it's only by your power. When you finish praying, the enemy will come and attack. When you finish praying, they come back to attack. When they finish praying, when you finish praying, and then you're asking yourself, what is the problem? Because your prayer life is no more on fire. Your prayer life is not more on fire. Jesus said, he said, wash and pray. We first of all read in the book of Matthew 21. Jesus said his house should be called a house of prayer. We are the church of God. Our body will be, should be filled with prayer. We are not supposed to be tired. If the spirit leads you, you can kneel down. And even thanking God for more than one hour before you start casting and bounding. Why? Because it pleases him for me and you to live a life that we are living today. A lot of people like me and you is dead. They are gone. Some of them didn't make it. Few only make it because the Bible makes us to understand that it's only few that we find the narrow gate. People prefer the Broadway gate. Look at all these big churches today. Look at all this auditorium today. When you look at it, it's like a stadium. You'll be surprised every time you watch this man of God. There is nothing about saying prepare the way of the Lord. First John and John chapter 1. He introduced about Jesus. And first John was telling us also about we our steadfastness if we say we have not seen we have made ourselves a liar that is why jesus said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak and you align your flesh to overcome you is one of the worst things that can ever happen to you i have wake up a couple of times in the morning my spirit said ah you just finished praying last night what are you still waking up this morning Ah, why don't you? Before that spirit is talking, I have already rebuked. Even that place is just talking. If I don't want to stand up, I stand up immediately. And when that spirit saw that I've already stand up, what happened? It goes away. Because you don't give, you don't negotiate with Satan. Don't negotiate with Satan. Don't have a place to negotiate with Satan. Many Christians are speaking in their flesh today. Even those that want to make heaven because their prayer life is no more. You see a fervent Christian who started with prayer. Now, her prayer life is no, is zero. You have to come back again. This is not the time for you to give up. Neither is the time for you to travel. When you travel, you prevail. That is why David asked God, God, should I pursue? Now is the time for you to pursue. Now is the time for you to overtake. Now is the time of recovery. Reviver. Reviver. Say, Lord, revive me. Revive my prayer altar. Your prayer altar has to be on fire. Or else we cannot penetrate. Or else we cannot receive. Or else we cannot make it. Without prayer, there is no rapture. Without prayer, you cannot be a, a lukewarm Christian and think if you are not on fire. What did the Bible tell us about the five wise virgins and the foolish ones? They were the lazy ones. He was talking about Christian. 
the vibe foolish version they were not a a pagan it was talking about christians a parable of all christians who are traveling in one way they want to make heaven but five were foolish they were lazy they were their lamp to go and even get fire on their lamp is problem they were lazy Ah, god don't worry now grace grace just they carry us grace until when the bridegroom came now they understand that this, their light supposed to be burning. Their prayer life supposed to be burning. Reading the word of God supposed to be burning. For them to be activated both physically and spiritually. The five wise ones, they were activated both physical and spiritually. They were fully loaded. They were loaded with prayer. They were loaded with the word of God. They were alert both physically. That is why they heard that the bridegroom was coming. But when the other ones heard it, it was too late from them. It was late. They wanted to get oil. Now it's time they want to pray. Hey, Jesus, oh, oh let me be raptured. I didn't know. Oh, Jesus, don't leave me alone. No. Jesus said, I don't know you more. The door was shut behind them. This is what is going to happen. If you allow the Satan to kill your prayer, if you allow Satan to take the word of God from you, when that your, the Bible is no more, once you have to, you started noticing those things. Please, my dear brothers and sisters, pray that that tree should be uprooted. Any projection in your prayer life. Say, God, whatsoever has been done on my prayer life. Oh, God, my Father, deliver me. Oh, God, activate my prayer life again. Oh, God, I don't allow that. Maybe you see yourself cannot pray. You say, ah, maybe today I'm just weak. Tomorrow it repeated. You say, ah, maybe it's just a normal thing. Next, tomorrow it repeated. You are thinking it's just a normal thing. Before you know, it is gone. Your fire is gone. That time, even to say in the name of Jesus, you'll be afraid to say it. You'll be afraid because Satan will bring fear. He will bring horror dreams. He will bring things that you don't want to see. Before you do, calling Jesus will be heavy for you. You should know that something is gone out of you. But the Lord is always so merciful. His grace is sufficient for us. This message is for me and you to really, really examine ourselves in this time. We don't have time. If you like, many people still take it. I'm wondering whether what is going on with people today. They don't see the world. Look at children be defied. A woman left her husband. Now get another man into his house. Has three boys. The man, first of all, hates those children. Beats them up when their mother is not there. Sexually abused them. One died in the case. The other one we are struggling with their lives. A man sexually abused a three years old child to death. Beat that baby. And three of them. He raped all of them. Boys. You can imagine the tragedy that those little children we have for the rest of their life. One is dead. Look at what is happening today. Parents, men sleeping with their own children. You should know the time, the tree, the fig tree, there's no more leaf coming out anymore. The, the day is fast spent. No matter what we do in this life, your salvation, can just hold it like a, a diamond. Do not allow anybody to steal it from you. Because in as much that we draw near to this day, is it going to be a day of happiness for some? And it's going to be a day of sadness. That you are going to be thinking, how can I survive these seven good years? You know seven years, the Bible says, except the Lord shorten those days. He said nobody will ever, ever live. Except for the very, for the elect sake, God shorting those days. We are already in the time. It's our generation. Don't let anybody deceive you. It's our generation. It's, the, it's our children's generation. In another, if this, the, the trumpet did not stand this year, or next year, or whatever, but it's our generation, this thing is going to happen. Because the Lord has shown all the signs. In one. Every day the Lord keeps showing signs. Everywhere you hear the rumors of war, everywhere you hear brothers and sisters fighting, Parents that betraying uh, children, children hating their parents. Everything is just happening just the way Jesus spoke to us in the book of Matthew 24. Look at the government today. They love corruption more than anything. They don't care about you. Now in Nigeria, what is happening around the world? Muslim wants to take over the world. They want Sharia law. They want people to worship their Allah. They don't want Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said that. He told us, he said, we, he said, be attentive and let your soul be connected because very soon the bridegroom cometh. It's coming for those who are ready. 
is coming for those who have denied themselves, who have been persecuted, who have lost friends, who have lost brothers, who have lost sisters. Many people today, they don't have anybody talking with them. Even their family has disowned them. Why? Because they follow the narrow way. The narrow way is not a place that Jesus said, wow, it's a place you have to be cutting chicken and eat every day. He makes us to understand in the book of Matthew chapter 7. He told us it's a narrow and difficult. You'll be hated for my sake. People will reject you for my sake. You'll be persecuted for my sake. He said, do not worry. A servant is not greater than the master. We are not greater than him. He's letting us to know that if he himself passed through it, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are going to face the same way. But he has taken all to the cross and given us the grace to carry it. The time Jesus came, there was no grace, but it is the grace that he left for us because he shed the blood. As far as he died on the cross, the grace was sufficient for me and you today. That is why what Jesus Christ passed through, we as his children will not go half of it. Why? Because he has given us the grace, but we are abusing this grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that the Lord Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God says in where I was reading for, if you are just coming, you are welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. All holiness, rapturable, sent ministry members. May the Lord bless you all for joining tonight. Mileshet, you are welcome. And no be, you are all blessed in the name of Jesus. Christ is coming. Maranatha will soon happen. People will be vanished in the world. Train up your children in the way they should grow. We are going to give account for everything. Don't be ignorant of anything. Don't allow anybody to laugh at you. Even if they say you are dressing like an old woman, don't worry about it. You are not concerned about what happened in this world anymore. I am not concerned about the anxieties of this world. I'm not concerned about the flashiness of this world. All I'm concerned about the Lord, give me the grace to be raptured. Help me, train me, give me the grace that I will make it on this day. It says, the things which you learn and receive and heard and saw in me these things do and the lord of peace will be with you jesus christ is the only one who can give us peace we can never find peace anywhere else when you have christ and you follow the way of holiness even if you have five euro believe me you'll be satisfied but when you don't have christ in you even if you have millions of euros your hearts will not have peace is the only one who have give us peace it is coming very soon in as much the world is tragedy everywhere. Don't be carried away and don't be deceived. Run away from any church that will make you not to be raptured. Many Christians hear it, they still leave what we are talking about. You don't have to hear what we said, but open your Bible and read for yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you because this is not the time for you to listen to one person. It's for you to go into the word of God and see what Jesus Christ explained to us. How will that day be? How do we find ourselves on that day? He says, his house should be called a house of prayer. Many prayer lives have been dead today. Many people, their dreams and visions is no more existing. Why? Because they have given themselves to the world. I pray that God Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Please, if you have not shared the video, share the video, invite somebody to be a part of this ministration. Let us do the work of evangelism together. For those of you who are hearing this message, we are inviting you tonight to our online Zoom meeting. You are welcome to join us. We've been on fasting 21 days by the grace of God. It's not, it has not ended yet. It's ending next. So you can still be a part of it. The Lord is never too late for anything. If you are passing one thing or the others, or also there is something you are struggling in your life that is a sin, the Lord is also there to set you free. So you can join us tonight on our online Zoom meeting. It's fire for fire night. Power must change hands. You just have to focus. Don't just come because of you want some God to do something for you. Come to Jesus Christ because you want to give your life to him. Join us tonight on our online Zoom meeting. If you want, you can worship from your home. For those of you who don't know what is Zoom, you only have to download the app on your phone. And then if you want more inquiries, you can inbox our the admins. They are all here. You can inbox Sister Rosemary. You can inbox Sister Precious Obasoge or Sister Faith Nusas. No, no, guess. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sister Faith. Please inbox Sister Faith. Inbox all uh, 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 Sister Esther. Esther is also there. Or you can inbox me. Join us tonight. 
tonight is a night of prayer 11 30 to 2 2 a.m in the morning so join us tonight you are all invited as the lord has been carrying us throughout this year we enter the year with prayer we continue to pray our prayer life don't have to wash code and you see what the lord if that thing you have been troubling you i don't know what is that thing that you have been asking god all these years that has been giving you problem that you have been crying day and night even when you don't you cannot tell people Bring it unto Christ today. Is it your papers you are expecting? Is it your marriage that is in trouble? I don't know what is the problem. Is it the fruit of the womb? I don't know what you really want God to do for you. But the word of God says, when God stepped in, all protocols changed. He said, who is he that speaketh that comes to pass when he himself has not commanded it in the book of Lamentation 3.37? There is nobody. That is why you have to be. Your friends cannot help you. Your mother cannot help you. Your father cannot help you. Your sisters cannot help you. The only person who can make every impossibility to become possible in your life is the Lord Almighty, who is the one that has all these papers. I don't know whether you are sick. That sickness has been for many years. Join us on our online Holiness Rapturable Saint Ministry. You are highly welcome. As I said before, our admins are there. They have been writing. You can go through it. Sister Faith is there. Sister Precious is there. Also, Sister Rosemary is there. Or you can as well inbox me to add you to our group. May the Lord bless you as you join us today. And your life will never remain the same. It's 11 p.m. as I said before. To 2 a.m. 2.30 a.m. in the morning. May the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Titus chapter 1. In the verse 2, let me read from verse 1. It says, Paul, a bought servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God, elected and acknowledged of the truth which according with godliness. In 2 says, in hope of eternal life, which God, which God who cannot lie, promised before time began but has in due time manifested his word through preaching which was committed to me according to the commandment of god our savior what does that mean god has promised before time these promises that we are seeing today there is a place jesus christ has gone to build for us he has gone to make it beautiful he's going to make it marvelous for us that we are going to spend eternity with him why do you want to miss that place because of this earth that we pass away Say heaven and earth shall pass away. Everything you have in this earth that you have been struggling, that make you not to have time for God, is going to pass behind. It's going to pass away. But only the word of God and holiness, living and righteousness that will never pass away. Dear brethren, if you are listening to this word of God today, I am telling you, do not allow anybody to deceive you. There are many false prophets. Look at what is going on. Our God is not a God of confusion. There is no way in the Bible. You see the bond servant. He said, godliness. Only what we make us to make heaven is holiness and righteousness. That is only the password. Why? Because our God who has called us is holy. There is no way that prosperity or there is no way that miracles is the one taking us to heaven. Godliness holiness and righteousness living a life of purity every weight that will make you not to go out not to move with god that if anything happened today look at children look at accident look at what is going on youths are dying every day why because we are fast the day is fast spent the time of this earth is the time of grace is fast going out already the time of grace is passing by already. Don't allow anybody to tell you anything. Now is the time for you to come to Christ. Now is the time with all genuineness. With every effort you have, put it on the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. People are busy building fame. They want to be famous. People are busy going into things that does not glorify God. People are busy joining an occult because they want to make money. They want people to recognize them because they want to do competition. Oh, my friend just bought a Jeep. Me, myself, I want to buy a, a land cruiser or how they call it. Yes, you join your friend. We say, come, I will put you in something. Before you know, you have gotten yourself in an occult. The Lord still loves you. Thank God you are alive today. The Lord is still there. You have a ministry. It has not been functioning. And then you went to a court to inquire power. The Lord is still calling you. Your soul is very, very precious to God. Heaven is sad when one's soul goes to hellfire. But the Bible says, Who have ears, let them hear. Our sisters hear the word of God. Be humble 
and listen to what Christ is telling you. The life you are living, women, Satan hates us from the beginning. And that is why he deceived Eve. He didn't come to Adam. He came to Eve. Why? Because women, they like to hear miracle, miracle, miracle. Women, uh, anywhere there is power, they push their husband to go there. Anywhere they hear somebody raised from the dead, before you know you are in a uncultic church, you are already being initiated. Many people cannot pray, as I said before. Why? Because they go to church, they call the prophets. They say, don't worry, bring money, I will pray for you. That is the first thing they steal from them. They go and sleep and they, they, they believe that a prophet is praying for them. Before you know, tragedy visits their own. In hope of eternal life. Everything we are doing is for us to inquire eternal life. This world is fast going away. There is nothing in this earth that will make you to, or to sell your soul. There is nothing in this earth that will make you to make yourself to be a tool for Satan to use at the end of the day. Look at it, everlasting life and everlasting punishment. Don't you hear the word in front, ever? It's an ever thing. It's not a thing that is like you sentenced to prison. Why do people get punished for prison? They sentence somebody because he killed someone. They sentence somebody because he raised someone. But that sentence is an everlasting sentence. God's sentence is a just sentence forever. Why do you want to trade your soul for that? Because your Bible is not being picked up. Because you don't read the word of God. Many pastors have deceived you. Many prophets have deceived you. Many prophetess have deceived you. Nowadays, there are more darkness involving in light. And that is why we children of God, we have to stay in the light. Be prayerful. Be vigilant. Be wise like a serpent. And become like a dove. What will make you wise is when you pray, the Lord will open your eyes to the realm of the spirit. To know the things that is coming at hand for you. And it will give you that grace to stand to the end. The more we fast and pray, the more we are strengthening. The more we fast and pray, the more the Lord is giving us the grace to stand still. No time to play, my dear sisters and brothers. We really don't have that time to give to Satan for him to win over us. We really don't have that time for us to hear to the voice of the Antichrist. Many Antichrists have gone out in form of human being, preaching the diluted word of God. They have diluted the word of God. Yeah, come as you like. Do not worry. They don't really care about Satan has come. He has transformed himself into an agent of light. And many pastors are so afraid to lose their members. Why? They are afraid to preach holiness. Because if they preach holiness, maybe you come to the church, you meet only two people. But when you preach prosperity, you see people just want to hear people coming from the club. They come to church the next day. They said, I have come to church. People coming from beer parlor, they come to the church the next day. They say, yes, I went to church. Nothing goes into them because what you put in them is what that does not edify their spirit for them to repent. Now, people don't cry for their sins anymore. In hope of eternal life, which God, which cannot lie, lie promise before time. What is your life of hope? What is that hope of you? Are you open to build a house? Don't get me wrong. You can have house, you can have cars, but don't allow the things of this world to take away the love of God from you. God in everything we do. This year is a promise that in our life, first thing after everything is God first. Give your day to God. Give your time for Him. Balance your skill. You are going to work, but have time for God. You are going to school, have time for God. You are going to uh, school, have time to read your Bible when you are home. Even if it is one page a day, you have achieved something. Don't give chance to Satan to rule over your heart, to rule over your mind, to rule over your spirit, to rule over your soul. Now, today, youths are dying like fish. They are dying. The human beings are just dying. Accidents everywhere. Ritual everywhere. Parents are killing. The men are using people for, for their, their family for ritual. Because the time is ripe. Jesus told us, their love of Christ have waxed cold. The church is sleeping. The church is sleeping. I hope you are not a church that is sleeping. Because me and you are the church Jesus Christ said is coming from. I hope you are not sleeping. If you go to the hospital today, 
If you see people lying there, they are only some of them have given their life to God. They are just asking God if God can give them a chance to stand up. They will serve Him for the rest of their life. But you that have bread, you have two hands, you have two legs, you are living a life of false food. You don't want to know the truth. The Bible says the truth you know shall set you free. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one cometh unto the Father except through Jesus Christ. Any other link, they are linking you that is one God. As if it's not through Jesus Christ, it can never be a truth. Let the whole world be a liar. Let God be truth. Because it's the word of God. It says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Any other religion, any other uh, uh, preaching that says that we are serving one God without coming through Jesus Christ is a lie. It's a lie. You cannot go to Jesus. You cannot go to, to God through Mary. You cannot go through Buddhists. You cannot go through Allah. You cannot go through other religion, but only through Jesus Christ. And this is the time they are taking Jesus Christ out of the picture. Now, I heard that some schools, they have removed the Bibles from the library. Many countries now, they are now arresting people not to use the Bible. Churches are being demolished. They don't want the word of God anymore. Why? Because we are fast getting near. It can happen tonight. Are you prepared? If the Lord come tonight, what will you say to him? When the Lord come tonight, are you really ready that you are going with him? If you sleep tonight and you don't wake up, are you confident that you will meet Jesus Christ in holiness? What shall it profit a man? To gain this old white world and lose one very precious thing, which is your soul. Why are you trading in? Offense will come. Now is the time that Satan is using many people to make you to have thought. He's using many people into your life to make you to feel that God is less in your life. No, you that know your God. Know that God is not less in your life. Sometimes he slacks back to wash you, to see how faithful you are. Don't be distracted. There is a lot of distraction in the world today. Do you that know the truth, stand in the truth. You that is just, be just. You that know how to do good, continue to do good. You that know how to show kindness, continue to show kindness. You that know how to love, continue to love. But friendship is a choice. Friendship is a choice. Love is a must. It's a command. Love everybody. But your friends are your choice. You cannot see somebody on the road and say, because this person is an unbeliever, you will not greet. No, greet them. When you preach to them, they want to bring other things to you. If your faith is not strong, please walk away. Preach to them about Christ. Let them know the truth. They might see you tomorrow and start running away. But mind the company you keep these last days. Either they pull you up, they pull you down. This is the two things. I have experienced it. I have experienced it. There are people that come into your life. They pull you up there. They make the work and the vision of God in your life. They bring it together that we all accomplish the vision. When there are people who come into your life, their aim is Satan will use them to pull you down. They, Satan will use them to discourage you. But now is not the time to look to people. It's to look unto God Almighty who wants you to finish well. Apostle Paul said, I discipline myself. Discipline yourself in every area. What comes out of your mouth is what defies your body. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What comes out from your heart, what you eat does not defile you. But what comes out from your mouth, mind what you share. I used to share any out thing, but 2020, I said, God have mercy on me in 2019. Whatsoever I share that does not edify the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Now is the time for let everything so that it will not stand before us on judgment day. When the Lord opened my eyes to see a lot of pastors, most of them are naked. They are preaching, but they are naked spiritually because the Holy Spirit is no more in them. They are not covered. They are just leading the sheep to hell. And nobody cares about that anymore. Why? Because they come to the church just to receive what they want to hear. And the shepherd give them what they want so that he will not lose members. Now is the time for you to save your soul. And also people will get offended. They might come 
and they hear the undiluted word of God. Next week they might not come anymore, but you have saved your soul and also speak the truth because the word of God says, the truth that you know shall set you free. The truth that you know, it will set you free. Even if it takes only two people in the auditorium, Tell them the truth, prepare them. Because of those truths you are saying, even if your right life is not so right, the Lord says, He said, the time of ignorance I overlook. He said, but now I show mercy to whoever I want to show mercy to. Because of the truth you are always saying, don't look for a large congregation. Please look for those who are ready to hear and to receive the truth of God. Even if it hurts, say it. Even if it's going to make you, to make people feel that you are bad, speak the truth. Now is not the time to pet the word of God. This Titus chapter 1, in the verse 13, there is something that really touches me. It says in the verse 13, let me, let me, let me read it from verse 10. It says, for there are many insubordinate, both idol talkers and deceivers, Especially those of the circumcision. 11. He said, Whose mouth must be stopped? Who subvert whole household? Teaching things which they ought not to teach. For the sake of this honest gain. This is what is happening in the church today. He said, God said, the word of God said, They are deceivers. They are talkers. Ideal talkers. They are what? They are even of those who are circumcised. They are the ones that process Christ. Go and read this in your Bible. That is why people are dying. They say, they say those they say, whose mouth must be stopped. When you preach, they say, ah, don't touch not my anointed ones. And do my prophet no harm. When you want to correct a man of God, when God sent you a message to them, they laugh at you and say, oh, she's not wearing a red collar or a white collar like a pastor. Who is she to talk to me? I went to Bible school. I graduated from Bible school. One thing I praise the Lord for, those the Lord used in the word of God, apart from Paul, those God, God used those days, they were, all le- they were not learned. They didn't go to school. Now, the word of God says, whose mouth must be stopped? Who subverts whole household? Teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain, for the sake of tithe and offering, for the sake of their own belly, for the sake of their own pocket. Their mouth has to be stopped because they dilute the word of God to deceive a whole congregation, to deceive these people who have been deceived, a precious soul that God created. The first time I heard about hell, fire, and so that was before I, I got baptized was about when I was becoming 12, 13 years. When I hear about that, a pastor, the apostolic church I was attending, when I'm going on the road, my heart is beating so hard. And I was questioning God in my heart. God, why did you create me? Why you don't make me a sand? Why you don't make me a air? I don't want to experience it. But when I got backslided, those words did not go out of me because I knew there was heaven and there was hell. Even when I was in the midst of even the world, drinking, smoking, doing all sorts of things that God does not appreciate, I was always afraid. I said, hey, I knew the life I was living was in danger. But I was asking God, how can I even, stop? How can I even live without this kind of life? But today... I am a testimony. If you give God a chance, many of you might be like me before. I was thinking living a life, having more than 10 boyfriends is something that will keep me well. I said, if I try it, I start living now for Christ. How can I feed? How can I take care of my brothers? I cannot do this. So I was asking so many questions. But the Lord says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. I will give you rest. I almost lose my life. Because of worldliness. I always lose my life because of the lie. The Bible says, when you tell your pastor that time, they will tell you, yeah, the grace is sufficient for you. We cannot live in grace and continue to sin because grace is with us. The verse 13 at 12, he said, One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretan, I, I, I always liar, evil beast, lazy gluten. Because of laziness, pastors don't want to work anymore. They either con- compose their lies 
to make people to slay, to be a slave of lies. Don't worry, Christ has already died. It doesn't matter where the tithe is coming from. Whether the tithe is blood money, whether the tithe is from prostitution, whether the tithe is for 419, whether the tithe is from whatever, it doesn't concern those people anymore, those pastors, those who call themselves shepherds. But the Bible says their mouth has to be stopped. And it says, verse 13, it says, This testimony is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. That they may be sound again. When you speak about this, if you are going to a church, you cannot rebuke them sharply. You cannot rebuke those mini skirts. You cannot rebuke all those ungodly dressing. You cannot rebuke them and let them know that Christ is coming. Then instead of you to be getting angry every day you go there, please save your soul. Go out from there. If you cannot call your pastor and say, please stop preaching all these things. God wants us to preach holiness. Then go out because you are coming out with anger. The trumpet can sound. You will miss your rapture. What will you tell Jesus? Hey, I would have said, talk to the pastor. Oh, I would have also left the church. Your salvation is a personal thing. In as much Jesus Christ has sent us to preach the gospel. Please, the first thing you have to guide is your own soul. It's your own soul. Anything that will make you angry, anything that will defile you, anything that will become a weight in your heart, to bring anger, to bring something that will make that very day or you sleep, you don't wake up and the, your book is open. They say you had a little bit anger when you went to church yesterday. Which excuse do you want to give? You will say, oh, because uh, I thought maybe through me, yeah, my pastor can, uh, 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 the people in the church can change. How can they change when you are afraid to tell them the truth? The word of God says, rebuke them sharply. That they may become sound in the faith. Rebuke those false prophets sharply. Tell people about them. Let them be their eyes be open to the reality of the truth. Because Christ is coming back again. God told Ezekiel. He says, if I tell you that the Israelites will surely die. And you don't want them. He said, I will require their blood from you. I believe none of us want the blood of anybody in our hand. Our own salvation we are already asking God to help us so that we can be real. We can be blameless and spotless before him. How can you carry somebody's else's blood in your hand? That is when let your truth be truth. Let your yes be yes. And let your no be no. He said, rebuke them sharply so that they will be sound in the faith. And he says, further, he says, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandment of men who turn from the truth. Unfortunately, people prefer to live in the lies than the truth today. How can God make you so beautiful? He took his time to build your life. He took the time to give you that beautiful nose. He took the time to put everything in shape. He looked at you and he said, wow, my daughter, now you can go into the world. You are beautiful. Now you came into the lie which told you that you have to make extra paint extra things on your body extra hair extra breast extra butt you have to open your body and you says in the road why are you looking at me have you not seen somebody before why would they look at you when you go naked on the road everybody will look at madness because any madman when people see a madman they stare at them when they see a mad woman they stare at them when you dress madly if you want to be addressed as a gentle with obedience and respect the way you dress make people to address you and you are still complaining why are you looking at me your teeth are open why won't they look at you you pull the whole attention and what do you think you said yeah why is he looking at me how you want people to address you. The sense of God, the bride of God, does not give us the guarantee for us to establish what God has taken his time to, 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 to defy what God has taken his time to create. The Bible says, therefore, it says we should what? 14. Not giving it to Jewish fable and commandment of the men who turn from the truth to the pure, to the pure. All things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defied. There is no way you will, there are people you will talk, they will say, my pastor say, my pastor wife is like this. Don't tell me my pastor graduated. You are not, because why you don't read your Bible? Why won't you argue? You don't read your Bible. No, my pastor wife feels woman air. 
My, that is why. Why did God not reveal to them? Wait for God to reveal to them instead of you to pray for your salvation and run for your life. You are the apple of God's eyes. This temple, this body is the temple of the Lord. It took time to make it. I was once one of them. I was once one of them. I was lying to myself. I spoiled my natural hair because of weaving. I spoiled my natural nails because of artificial nails. I spoiled my eyebrow because of shaping what I want. I spoiled my skin because I want my skin to be like, to be another color that God did not give me. I started bleaching it. I was looking, I was still not satisfied. I was going more deeper to see what we make. I was even thinking if I'm going to do breast enlargement. You can see Satan, you will not get satisfied. He will be putting new idea in your head. What is next? No, oh, this shape is not good. Okay, you see another person who fits her name. You are saying, where did you fix it? Maybe you used to fix it 50 euro. He says, this place, they will do it well. It is a hundred euro. Now, it's a, Satan is like women. We are spending on something that is not necessary. Not until you allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life. To realize that you will one day, when you allow the Holy Spirit, you will be realized that you look at yourself in the mirror. Very natural. You say, what have I been doing to myself? What is going on with me? What have I been doing with my life? Allow Christ to come inside your life. These people, the word of God says, to the pure, all things are pure. But even their mind and conscience, he said, to the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure for them. They will argue with you. Thou shalt not judge. I have never seen so much people who are so ignorant that know only one scripture in the Bible. Matthew chapter 7. Judge not so that you will not be judged. Even those that don't read their Bible, they cram that scripture. Judge not so that you will not be judged. That is the only thing I have seen them quote in the Bible. They have been going to church for years. Once you want to correct them, correction has turned to judgment. They don't want to hear. Their conscience has already been defied. If you want to talk, they will refer you to their G.O. mama. If you want to go, go talk to them, they will refer you. They will say, which day you become a pastor? When did you start preaching? But don't forget. Don't because of that stop preaching to them. Even when you see them, they want to escape. Wave your hand from this. Hey, my sister, how are you? God bless you. Yeah, how are you? Because they will see you and want to be running away from you. Because they know that they, want, you, they don't want to hear what you want to say. Say it to them and walk your way. One day, the Lord can use that word to speak to them. Or they might die in their sin, which we don't pray. This is not the time to play church. The church is me and you. Jesus Christ said, I'm coming for the church. Do not live a life of life because you want it to please you. On, so on Sunday, you are in church. On Tuesday or Thursday, you are in ladies' night. On Friday, you are in a club. On Sunday, you go and carry a microphone to sing. You are singing to the devil who is your father. It can never be God. It's not possible. Because you cannot serve God and serve devil. There is no way. Friday, you are in the club. Saturday, you are in a party. On, you get drunk and you came back home. Sunday morning, you are in church holding my microphone. Who are you singing to? You are singing directly to your father, the devil. It can never be God. Because God, the Holy Spirit does not stay for in a place that is dirty. Our God is so holy and holy. Holy is his name. The 24 elders, they bow before him. They bow before his throne. They worship him daily. The angels in heaven, they are so afraid. When God sent them, they move without looking back. Who are we that we think we can play God? In as much, you are looking for miracles. In as much, you are looking for signs and wonders. When you give your life to Christ genuinely, signs and wonders shall follow you. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, signs and wonders will follow you. You will be surprised. The God Jesus said, this that I do. He said, you will do, we will do more than him. Only when we don't doubt him and his prayer, our prayers. One of us are doubting Thomas. 
most of us are Judas. We are in the hands of God. Our heart is corrupt. We are only about money. Pastors today don't care about souls. All they care about is about tithe and offering. They are already planning their trip, even thinking of the next, latest car to buy in the new year to let people know that God is helping them. No, God is not. That is not the money from God. It is from the Father, Satan. Their Father, Satan. Because when Jesus Christ fasted after 40 days and 40 nights, what Satan just wants is, is, is a worship. He said, Jesus should bow down for him. I will give you all this. He was talking to God himself to bow down before him. Once you start bowing down to Satan, many people, they are not genuinely repented. Things are working. They think, oh, things are working for me. Yeah, they are giving testimony. But one thing is that Satan, when you bow to Satan, he gives you that thing that gives you trouble. Even with the money, you are not happy. But when you are in Christ Jesus, all things have passed away. You have pulled the old garment. Your own self, old self is gone. He said, to the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defied and unbelieving, nothing is pure in their eyes. He said, but even their mind and conscience is defied. 16, he said, they profess to know God, but in their works, in all they do, they deny him. They profess they love God. They profess their children of God. He said, but in all their work, they deny him. Being abominable, they are disobedient to the truth of God. They hate holiness. They hate righteousness. All they want is about worldliness. How they can wear new clothes to church. How they can wear new shoes to, to, to church. How they can go and seduce men. They have their mindset. Some people, oh, now only the art God they look. Only the art God they look. Yeah, the Bible says, from the abundance of the earth, what reflects in the outside, he speaketh from the abundance in the earth. He knows that that mini skirt on Sunday, you knew that that choir master you want to wear so that I can see your leg. You knew that that pastor you are going to sit in front of the seat. That is your plan that comes from your heart. So the Bible says, he said, they profess to know God, but their works they deny. Being abominable, they are disobedient and disqualified for every good work. You are judging me. Thou shalt not judge. I have never seen people who quote that scripture more than anybody, apart from those who don't read their Bible. Before you speak like this, don't judge, oh. God say, if you don't come out your plank for your eyes, why you won't? That is the only thing. Didn't you hear it now? The Bible says, rebuke them sharply. Rebuking is not judging. It's telling you that here yeah, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's telling you, we are telling you that holiness is the password to heaven. We are telling you that righteousness is only the password. Because God who called you is holy. He said nothing that will defy heaven will come there. You cannot carry your artificial, all those abominable stuff in your body that is a weight. And you think that you are carrying it here. It's not contained heaven. Because heaven, our God, the, that place we are going is too holy to be stained. That is why you don't blame people that you talk to today. They will argue with you. Instead of them to take it into consideration, go into their closets and search for God themselves. Oh God, this thing I heard today. I thought my pastor was preaching the truth. But I heard another thing today that holiness is the password. But I thought it's grace. By grace, you are giving us grace. We can live how we like. Search for yourself. Go to your knee. Pray, fast and, pray, uh, fast and pray. The Holy Spirit will open your eyes. He will warn you and tell you, my daughter, this is the way of righteousness and holiness. That is all that is the password to get into that holy place. You must be pure. You must be truthful. You have to stand for the truth. Your yes have to be yes. Don't say because it's my mother. Don't say because it's my brother. Don't say because it's my relation. Oh, don't say because it's my pastor. Pastors are human like you. Yes, they have grace, but some people, the grace on them, they have given it to Satan. Now it's Satan that is controlling them. No more godliness. And you that knows the truth, when you see such things, speak the truth. If it takes you to be insulted or it takes you that they will say, don't come to this church anymore, just speak to them and move your way. But what will happen? It is recorded in heaven that you warn them in hand. You told them the truth. I have told many pastors, Preach holiness and righteousness. Now is not the time of, yes, grace is there. But people are living under you. Who wants to go to heaven? Let them know that Christ is coming. I tell them and I don't care. Because that is the only thing. Your record in heaven is very important. The word of God stated it in this titles. There is no way for you to even argue or say, what is the problem? Say rebuke. 
I, I can show you another scripture. Those are people who says that ah, don't judge so that you not be judged. Why did Apostle Paul say rebuke them sharply so that they can be sound in their faith? So that their eyes can be open from their blindness. So that their deafness can be open because they are so blindfolded by the things of the world. Today, names, people are carrying names of other people in their body. Head, Calvin Klein, uh, 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 Mary Kay. They said because they, they feel, the, before you know, the pride of this life is in their life. And all those things does not glorify God. God made us wonderfully he has built us he has made us he has created us christ is coming he's coming for a bride that is undefiled a bride that is blameless a bride that is spotless what does it mean spotless living a life of truth a life of truth jesus said i am the way first of all accept him as your lord and personal savior into your life now you have to invite the presence of the holy spirit to lead you and teach you all things. To teach you and lead your way. Ask him questions. The Holy Spirit is be given unto us. It's not given to a particular people. It was given unto everyone that seek him. Holy Spirit will come to you. Holy Spirit, I want the truth. I want all that will make me to make heaven. I just want to make heaven. I want to love Jesus Christ. Oh, with all my heart, with all that I have. Show me the way. You will see how. Every day, even you'll be getting revelations of the real truth. When the Lord opened my eyes to see that it was a rapture, and it was showing me, the angel was just showing me the things that he don't like. He didn't send me to tell people, but I shared the dreams. Because when the dream is being given to you as a servant of God, it's also given to you that other people around you might also know the truth. I was... After the gate, we all lined up in a long gate. That was somewhere last year. If I'm not mistaken, I think beginning of last year or somewhere. Everybody was lined up in this straight gate. Me, I was like, like in the middle of the line. It was so lined, they were waiting for this gate to be open. Suddenly, I slept off in that revelation. So I sat down on the, on the corner of the line and I, I slept off. The next thing I saw, saw a hand just pulled me inside the gate and closed the gate. So, and I wake up from that uh, 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 in the revelation. And I saw that the gate was closed. And I turn around. I saw a man standing with me. He says, yes, that the gate has closed. That everybody outside now, the rapture have taken. That the, nobody can come in anymore. I say, ah. So, I saw people. Okay, two years. Last two years. God bless you, Sister Esther. Last two years, the Lord gave me this revelation. And the Lord. And I, I wake up. And I saw that there is a, a man with me. And I, he just pulled me. I was still sleeping. In the dream, inside the revelation, because the gate was too long and the gate was not open. People were just waiting. I didn't know that people were already going. I was sleeping. But a hand pulled me inside and the gate was closed. And I was asking, I said, ah, what happened? He said, yes, the, the rapture has taken place. That now the tribulation is starting right now. And I saw many people I know. First of all, I saw the people that were related to me, blood and flesh. And I saw their wives. They were all outside. It was like in a winter. They were putting their hand in things that they make a little fire. And I was asking the man by my side, the angel. I said, these are my brothers. Why are they and their, fam their wives not raptured? Their children were not there. They were already gone. I don't know whether they were raptured, but they were not with their children. He says, yes, the men were not raptured and their wives. Because the men said, he showed me one of their wives. That one was wearing these tight jeans and they tear all these jeans on the front. These jeans that you wear like when you see a madman, you don't, you don't know who is a madman and a human being anymore. Because everything, they call it fashion. Fashion comes from the pit of hell. The angel was showing it to me. He said, look at the what she's wearing. A jeans that was just divided in the front. He said, look at her hair. The hair was carved all this time. They used to barb all this place. And then they were tinting. The lady tint her hair. There was a mark on that tint. The angel of the Lord was showing me. He said, that is the purpose. And he showed me another one with a bomb jeans. They said, call it bomb shot. He was wearing a very short skirt and jeans and trouser. And he says that the reason why the men did not rapture with them. I was asking. And he says, because the husband are influencing their wives. To dress sexy for them and that is why they themselves did not rapture and i came out on facebook i warned people this is what the lord showed me apart from that 
I looked on my left. I saw a holiness brother and a sister. They were not, they were outside the gate. I asked him, I said, oh, but this person is a holiness brother and sister. Why are they the same? Because both of them have unforgiveness. That they are quarreling. Because of that, they did not actually, they refused to forgive each other. So I was like, wow, I said, but they are outside. The Antichrist has already dispatched his soldiers as I was asking these angels this thing. Then the third one was a deaconess I knew in one church. She was just busy. She bent all her face. She was chewing gun. She was just chewing her mouth. So I said, but this person is a deaconess. Why is she not rapture? He said, I should look at that deaconess and look at her daughter. That they, don't, they did not rapture because look, he said, I should look at her face. She bent. She was wearing a weave on. She was, he said, I should look at her nails. She was fixing all this artificial. I was just asking questions in that dream. And the angel was just, he's, a, he's an angel, he's a man. He was speaking to me as I was asking. Look at her nails. Look at her face. Look at her paint. Look at her hair. I was so sorrowful because the gate has already been locked. I said, but how can we help them? Antichrist is coming. He said, yes, the gate is locked. But they are not able to come in. But something happened in that dream. I don't know how I came out from that gate. And I could meet this deaconess and his child, his daughter. And I said, look at the reason why God said that you did not rapture. You have to strip off all these things. The daughter of the woman obeyed. She was taking off her artificial. She packed her hair and put extra hair. She took it off. She removed the jeans, this overall jeans. She pulled it. She was cleaning all her makeup. She was just making herself pure. And I told her that the, the mother did not even answer me. She was busy just showing her gum with all her makeup. What am I trying to say? This revelation... It's a pure revelation that was given to the saints. Even if you are traveling, you don't have unforgiveness. You cannot enter there. If you are a man or you are a lady, let me dress sexy for my husband. And that is why you are striking yourself naked. Oh, so that my husband will not look outside. You are deceiving yourself. You cannot be raptured because the temple of the Lord in you is being exposed, causing people to lose. If you are changing the color on your head, you cannot be raptured. If you are dressing with... Putting on makeup, you cannot be rapture. This is not what I am uh, I'm saying. It's what God shows to me. I am, I'm your, I, am, I am telling you all because I asked all the questions. He said that is the purpose why they could not rapture. You cannot change the identity of God to your own identity, how you want it to be. The word of God said to us, he said in this first Titus, I, in Titus I read, he said they profess to know God, but in their works they deny him. They profess to love Jesus. If you ask everybody in the world, I am a Christian, but they don't live according to the commandment of God. Mm -mm. The Lord showed me. They were tinting their hair. How can you tint your hair? Okay, you don't want the black hair God gave to you. Me, I have white hair. Long time, it's not from now. I was so ashamed, I would go and put dye to dye it black. But I didn't know that it's a beautiful thing God gave to me. I was being lied to. People would say, ah, go and dye it. People would think you're already old. I will dial it. People will be laughing. Oh, I like, I like your dark hair. I was lying because I have white hair that I dyed that people will not see. But living a life of lie, it cannot take you anywhere. It says they profess to know God, but in the works they deny themselves. Being ab abominable. Look at children thrown on the trash can. People are throwing, having nine months baby and they gave birth to that baby only to tie them and throw in the trash can. Look at men turning to women. Look at women turning to men, taking almost. I was watching a child the other day. The parents were supporting two of their children to become a trans. The one they gave birth as a girl is taking no more at the age of 11, 12, already to become a man. The little one who is about 6 or 7 years is born as a boy. But the parents say we are there to support them. Yeah, so that they will not be ashamed. What God has created is not un is unchangeable because he wanted that way. There is no way God make a mistake that said the body, the person is born in a wrong body. Except that you, brought, you came from Satan. So what am I saying? Now is the time for you to stand, sis, brothers. This is not the time to play church. This is the time to, 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 to build your holy temple, your heart with God. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Anything, if you deny your title, title will not take you to heaven. If I cannot deny my title, maybe today I will not be here. I know what I was doing in the house of God. 
but I see that all these things will not, will not take me to heaven. I deny myself. I separate myself to know God the more. I carry the Bible to read the more, to see what God is telling me, not what man is telling me. If you don't open your Bible, you will be deceived in this last day. And I'm telling you, many people will repent after the rapture, but it will be a hard time. Some will not even be able to endure the persecution. Now is the time. The free gift is there. The free love of God is there. The love of Christ is still here. The grace is still working on our life. May the Lord have mercy upon this generation in the name of Jesus. Christ is coming. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. Don't allow people to tell you, Oh, don't worry. Yeah, grace it will speak for us. Grace is, oh yes. But should we continue to live in sin? That grace may abide. You have divorced your husband. Jesus said divorce is a sin. God says, I hate divorce. In the book of Malachi, he says, I hate divorce. I hate divorce. Malachi 2.16. But today, people are divorcing their husband, getting married. They are living a life of fornication, adultery. And he says, yeah, God have given us the grace. Let all men be a liar. But let God Almighty be a just God. Our God never lies. The Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 1 verse 10, it says, if we say we have no sin, we have made God a liar, which we cannot make God a liar. He's a God of all truth and nothing but the truth. That is why he has made us. He said we should seek him first. We should seek his kingdom. We should seek the righteousness, living right before him. He said anything we need shall be added unto you. And one thing I have noticed, is the peace of God that passes everything in our life. Without the peace of God, no matter what you have, you are nothing. You are nothing. Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, it says, Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deed. What is the old man? The life of the old is the life of the world. Now you have put on Christ. Don't lie to yourself. Since you have taken out the old man, let me read it from, let me read, let me confront so that it will be easier for us. In the verse, Colossians 3, I read from verse 1. It says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Only seek the salvation of God. Seek the righteousness of God. Seek the holiness of God. Seek what God loves. Say, God, make me to know what you love. Make me to hate what you hate. And make me to love what you love. He says, seek those things. What are those things that will make you to go to heaven? That is what you have to seek. Praying, asking the Holy Spirit, reading the word of God always. Ask God, please God, direct my path. I cannot direct your path. What I have not ready, I said the Holy Spirit will lead me and is leading me to speak to you. So anything that comes out is not mine. And is speaking to myself also. The Apostle Paul said, I discipline myself that I will not preach to others that me myself, I will be disqualified. Say, God forbid it. He says, seek those things above which Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Two, he says, set your mind on things above not on things of this earth. The word of God is truth. You cannot change it. Ah, now what life will they live? Oh, enjoy yourself as you are still young. Enjoy the world and land in hell. It's an everlasting punishment. God forbid. Enjoy all the riches. Enjoy all the names. Enjoy all the fame. You can be a leader that people knows, but do you, does God knows you? You can be somebody that you are very recognized in the society. Does God recognize you? This is a question you have to ask yourself. Set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, our life appear, when Christ, who is our life, will appear, then you also will appear with him in the glory. Your works, my dear sisters and brother, is not in vain. Don't worry, it might get more harder. It might get more difficult. It might get more persecution. People might hate you the more. Don't worry, don't worry. Continue. Continue. Our salvation drawn draw near, closer every day. Don't worry about that. As we draw more closer to the door of the bridegroom, 
as he's coming to pick us to dine with him. Please be among those brides. Be a man that will be a bride. God, Jesus Christ, refer both male and female as his bride. Walk in holiness and righteousness. 4 says, I'm reading from Colossians chapter 3. He said, when Christ who is our life appear, then you will appear with his glory. Therefore put to death your membership which are on the earth. Put them to death. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and conventionsness, which is idolatry. It's an idol because the things you want to seek in this world makes you not have time for God. Which means you have put God aside. Those things have become an idol in your life. Fornication is an idol. Passion of the things of this world is idolatry because these things have taken the place of God in you. Evil desire. I want to have 20 cars. I want to have this, the latest Omar. The la Why, how can you have not have those things when your mind will not be in the Christ? Satan will definitely give it to you. Then it will make you to walk you out every day to be bringing people for rituals. You are killing. The more you lie one, you are lying more. You kill one, you are sharing. Before you know, you become a blood sharer. You are sharing blood. Some women today, they use their menstruation. They use their abortion. Some people cannot even have children because all the children in their womb, they have used it to do ritual and they are now being famous. And you, you want to follow their way. The Lord says, set your mind on the things above. Put to death every member's of this world which are on the world evil desire conventiousness which is idle say because of these things the wrath of god is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourself once walked once walked when you live in them as i said i was once in the world but i thank god for my life today i am still working god is still working on me I am still asking God every day anything that is in me that I don't know that maybe when the rapture sound today or I die today that will hinder me not to come to your throne. Lord, reveal it to me. Search me until you find nothing. If you find anyone, let reveal it to me so that I can repent from it immediately. He said, but now you yourself are put to. He said, for, I'm reading verse 8. He said, but now you yourself are to put off all things anger take it away from your life rot please if you are the one causing rot causing a uh, uh, discord rot angry fighting take it out of your life my list please if there's anybody that you are keeping my list that you say you will not forgive make amen this day blasphemy blasphemy the holy spirit i see god show me when the God did not show you. Ha, the Holy Spirit is talking in me. When the Holy Spirit does not talk in you. Yeah, I'm prophesying. The Holy Spirit is not prophesying. Blasphemy. Say, put it away. Filthy languages. You can never be a child of God and be making jokes like the world. No. Out of your mouth. Say, you should take these things out. Say, do not lie to one another. Since you have put up the old man with his deed. Ten now says, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, scientist, slave or free. He said, but Christ is all and in all. Jesus Christ is all that is in all. Seek him first. Seek Jesus with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Give it all to him and you will see your life will never remain the same again. Because you no more live according to the standard of the world. Even all those things you used to do. You will see even when you hear the worldly song, it will be biting your body because the Holy Spirit does not, re does not, does not condone those things anymore in your body. What is there is the Holy Spirit. When you allow the Holy Spirit, automatically anything that does not glorify God, if it comes to your ear, or it comes to your spirit, the Holy Spirit will reject it immediately. But when you don't have Christ, that is when you hear the worldly song, you are still dancing and nodding your head. When you have the Holy Spirit in you and you have given all to Christ, when those songs come, you will see your spirit will just be bitter. Allow God into your life and you will see what He will do for you. It is coming back again. Let us search our home. What is our home? Our self, our heart. We should clean ourselves. Say, God, Lord, sprinkle your water. 
Jesus Christ said it, the word of God in the book of Ezekiel 36, verse 25, the word of God said, I will sprinkle my water upon you and I will clean you from all filthiness, from all your idol. He said, and I will take out the heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh and put a new spirit in you. The Lord is willing and you will see what the Lord will do. He will bring people to be a blessing to your life. If you think that job that you are doing that does not glorify God, if you leave it, believe me, the one the Lord is keeping for you in front is the one that you will have that job that will give you peace of mind, will make you to glorify God. If you are the one who says, ah, let me be living my life. When I get married, I will settle. Give your life to Christ. You will see how God will direct a man that will honor and respect you to your life. If you are in that wrong marriage and, and you are in that wrong marriage, give your life to Jesus. You will see God. God says the art of a king is in his hand. You will see how God will hold the art of your husband and he will Sprinkle his water. You will now see that the God will now change that man for you. God will change your life for you. You will see that everything. He says when God step in, all protocols are going to change. Allow God to step in in your case. It's not to add. You might think it's hard. Ah, if I leave this thing. Uh, no, you are already bargaining. Allow him to come. Give all to Christ. That man, you have already have children. He has paid your diary. There is no place you are going. But pray, when you give your life to God, you will see that that man, you will be transformed. Because God says the art of a king is in his hand. He says in his word, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27, he says, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything to add for me to do? There is nothing hard for him. And he says in the book of Jeremiah, that's St. Jeremiah 33, in the verse 3, he said, call upon me in the days of your trouble. He said, I will answer and deliver you and show you all new things. This is the God we are serving. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word is always the same. Even if this earth passes, he's going to still repeat what he has said for 2,000 years ago. He's going to repeat it and say, this is what I said. And it came to pass. Allow him in your life. Christ is coming back again. I'll believe in you by the grace of God. I'll be here now. I just want to encourage any of you who has watched this, who has been on this platform. If there is anything in your life that you think is impossible, our God is able and exceedingly and abundantly, abund abundantly to do all things above all our expectation. What he just needs from you is for you to come to him. Seek him first. Seek the kingdom both in righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. First of all, allow Jesus in your life. Secondly, look for the right thing that Christ really loves. What is this thing Christ loves? And thirdly, it says all you need. Is it the fruit of the womb? The childlessness? Is it, what is it that you need? Is it the joy and peace in your life? What is it that you need? That prostitution that you are living, it will give you peace. You will see that even if you don't, when you eat, you will relax for you because you know that you don't have peace now. Anything you need, the Lord is the God of all peace. I'm here to encourage you. If you heard this message today, don't let it throw all it on a soil on, on a on a filthy ground. Please let it enter a soil that will grow fruit in your heart and say, Today, this message is for me. I am giving my life to God. I am not going back anymore. Tonight is our night of power must change hand. Join us online on our prayer group. That is Holiness Rapturable Send Ministry Online Ministry. Yeah, you can worship us from home. If you want us, if you want to join us tonight, we have been on our 21 days fasting by the grace of God. We still have it in next week, so you are not too late. If you still want to continue and join us, you will see that before the end of the fasting and prayer, your life will never remain the same again. You can inbox me to add it to the group. You can inbox Sister da uh, uh, Esther Daniel, Sister Rosemary. Yeah, it's also there. She can add you, Sister Faith, Sister Precious. They are all here. You see them writing that you should join us in holiness, rapturable sin. But if you cannot uh, meet them, you can also inbox me to add you to the group. You can only join this period of season of prayer and see what the Lord will do for you. We are inviting you. You are as much welcome because this year is only congratulations that is permitted in our life. Only congratulations. 
that is permitted in your life. Only congratulation that is permitted in my life. And only congratulation the Lord will also give to us when he comes in his glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. We will never lose our crown in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have been watching me or you have not even been commenting, you are just there. Don't worry. I just want you, if you want to give your life to Christ today and you know that this world has really touched you, don't allow people to deceive you. As I told you, you can go and read titles. So rebuke is not a sin. So tell people the truth. Don't let people deceive you. It's not judgment. It's not judgment. Even if you go to read this Timothy chapter 4. Let me just use that to round up this word today. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Those of you who are saying, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. I want you to listen to something. The word of God is very deep. Allow the Holy Spirit. It will bring everything that you need to know. It will let you know. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 4. I read in the verse, let me from verse 1. He said, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So, 2 says, he said, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Please listen to this place. He said, convince people about the truth. That is conviction. He said, rebuke them. Rebuking their sin is very important. Let people know that this life you are living is not right. Exalting with all long suffering and teaching. Theory says, he said, for the time will come when they will not enjoy sound doctrine anymore, but according to their own desire, because they have ancient ear, they will heap up for themselves teachers. The diluted teacher will dilute the word of God. And for say, and they will turn their ear away from the truth and be turned aside to fable, to lies that suit them in their worldliness. And it says, verse 5, lastly, it says, But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. How do you fulfill your ministry where you don't tell people the kind of life they are living is a sin they should repent? John the Baptist did not come to preach love, love. He came to preach that the people should repent, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus Christ preached that people should repent, that there is another kingdom we are going. The disciples of Jesus preached only repentance. But today, the church is full of love. Yes, we love Jesus, but rebuke their sin. Convince them to the truth. Let them know the truth of God, the way of salvation. May the Lord bless us tonight in the name of Jesus. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time for you to know the truth. Now is the time for you to prepare your body, soul, and spirit for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you are here and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to say after me wherever you are. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. He said, Lord, I accept you, Jesus Christ, into my life as my Lord and my personal Savior. Oh, Lord, forgive me all my sins. I renounce my sins before your feet today, Lord Jesus. Cleanse me in the power in your blood that you share in the cross of Calvary. Wash me from all my filthiness and of my idol that is living in me. Oh, God, give me dominion from today above every sin in my life. Holy Spirit, I invite you from today, come and take over my life. Come and take over my soul. Come and take over my thought. Come and take over my lead living. Come and direct me. Be my director, Holy Ghost. Lead me today in all truth. Direct my path. Teach me all I need to know so that I will not end up in hell. Holy Spirit, I depend on you as I decrease. May you increase from in my life today in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pull my old clothes and I wear a new garment today. I pick up my cross and I deny myself and I follow you, Lord Jesus, for whatever. And I will never go back to the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul today. For all I have is yours, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. If you are there watching me and you have given your life to God, congratulations, my brother. My congratulations, my sisters. I want you from today, always follow a place where you know look for a bible believing church where they preach holiness where they preach salvation where they preach repentance when they want where they want you to make heaven where you hear daily to prepare your heart and your body soul and spirit for the coming of our lord jesus christ of nazareth to be blameless and spotless but if you don't have a place of worship 
for now you are welcome to our online ministry you can join us online from your home you can hear the undiluted word of god now this period we are in fasting and prayer by the grace of god our normal activity starts which is you have time to ask questions we have healing and deliverance service we have our bible study all is online you can worship from home and on friday we have our ninth vision which we are all going to meet today also on our ninth vision and your life will never remain the same the lord is going to step into your case and you are going to see that your life will never remain the same all your protocols are going to change all the veils all the veil that the enemy has placed that there is no help the lord is going to take it out from your life in the mighty name of jesus all the marks that the enemy has placed that will make your helper not to locate you join and pray you will see that your life every mask will be removed and your epa will surely locate you in the mighty name of jesus i pray for each and every one of you who has already washed up me today and by the grace of god i pray that the lord almighty will make you never to wither away i pray that the salvation of the lord in your life will continue to wash stronger and stronger i pray that the fire of revival will come upon your life i pray for transformation upon your life i pray for increase increase of prayer increase of traveling increase of standing still in the mighty name of jesus and i pray today that as you live here your life will never remain the same in the name of jesus may the lord bless you for joining us today in the mighty name of jesus may the peace of god that passeth all understanding be with you in the name of jesus god bless you all as you join have a blessed and a dimless night in the name of jesus if there is a mouth to pray there is a god to answer God bless you. Have it like have a blessed night. Bye everyone. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Amen. Amen. It will make a way. Amen. New day, he will make a way.